when we talk about shared societies, we're not just talking about minorities or marginalized groups. A majority can be marginalized for certain policy purposes. Uh, the Club of Madrid has done a lot of work uh, with women and uh, peace and security, uh, and we have a particular project in the Horn of Africa. And one of our participants, I remember in the first mission, 2009, a woman from Uganda said, you know, I'm talking to our foreign minister, and he said, but what do women have to do with peace and security? And she said, and then I explained it to him, and he went, oh. And I think what we need are a lot of oh moments where we come to understand that what we think we're doing isn't having, is having a differential effect on certain groups. And how can we identify those groups? What are the tools that we can use to make sure that we are not having bad outcomes because our policy is not well designed? And so the term shared societies has perhaps a kind of a new age sound to it in a way, you know, sharing and caring, and it's a little bit Sesame Street. But, it, but the reason for it is because it's a two-way street. It's this notion of giving people not just the opportunity to participate, but a sense of dignity, that, that we share a society, we share responsibilities, we share the need to try and understand how we're doing things. But the ultimate result is meant to be eff eff efficacy, effectiveness. It's meant to be policies that actually work, policies that don't waste money.